Hi everyone, welcome back. We're here to share more of our CFD study in COVID planning with you. After many weeks of exploration internally and with consulting engineers and vendors, we've begun to develop a number of possible strategies for making our offices safer. I've categorized these into two areas of discussion. The first is targeting the general quality of indoor air through sanitizing, filtering, or dilution. And the second is how we might target a direct concentrated cloud of particles, like seen in our CFD simulations. And this might happen by physically blocking or compartmentalizing space or environments. There's so much information that's being circulated out there, and we know it can be overwhelming. But we hope that the ideas that we share might help in some way. I invite you to watch this video sharing some of our thoughts about coronavirus mitigations and contact me if you have any questions. From our CFD model, we're, we're understanding the lighter droplets float, the heavier droplets fall and don't travel as far. Can we trap the heavier droplets within a sort of compartmentalized area, make sure people are cleaning surfaces, washing their hands all the time, and then for those lighter particles, is there something we can do in the sort of upper parts of our office atmosphere to both filter and sterilize and purify that air? Here at HALT, we are going to look at increasing the filtration, that is the filters that are already in our HVAC system to the capacity that we can. We believe it's highly uncommon that you could place a HEPA filter into a mechanical system that is not prepped for a HEPA filter. It would wreak havoc on the system, but you probably can increase the coarseness of the filters that are in your systems. Another point of discussion are air purifiers or portable air purifiers that could be scattered around the office and plugged in and removing contaminants, bacteria, and potentially virus from the air over a long period of time. The downside of those systems if you refer to our CFD model, is that in many cases, if a person, say sitting here, was that infected staff member in the office, if the air purifier isn't placed between that staff member and the other staff members, the air purifier is much less effective. It's not gonna take that cloud that we saw in the CFD model and distinguish that cloud unless that air filter is in its direct path. Another common point of discussion is, if I have windows, should I open them? It turns out that in this net zero design facility, we have no operable windows. We designed a very tight envelope, and this building was intended to operate in a way that we were reusing and recirculating as much air as possible. If you were to consider operable windows as a means of diluting the air in your space, that can be a very effective tool. The positive side is that we are diluting and dispersing that cloud. However, depending on the direction of the air that's either coming through the window or in some cases, a ceiling fan, um, we are pushing that virus all over the office. So we are decreasing the concentration, which is a good thing, but we are potentially spreading the virus throughout the office. In our office cubicle scenario, we already have half height partitions. And as we illustrated in the CFD model, that potential viral cloud can pass under these workstations, around and over these workstations. We believe that by increasing almost full partitions around three sides of these workstations, say to a height of six or seven feet, would stop the transportation of those particles across the studio as you saw in the CFD model. As we also saw in the model, the lighter particles are likely to still rise and go up over those partitions. If we're concerned about, like in our model, that first 10 minute period when that cloud just simply travels 30 or 40 feet across the office, how can we potentially eliminate that cloud? Well, another commonly used method of killing virus or bacteria in healthcare situations would be the use of UVC light and some other visible spectrum lights that can kill bacteria. UVC lighting is probably most successful in killing viruses. It also needs to be noted that UVC lighting is not healthy for human beings. In most cases, when that light is being directed downward, it's being done in a empty or unoccupied space. However, we are looking into the fact 
that there are applications of UV lighting that can be directed upwards. So now imagine we have our six feet partitions wrapping around three sides of this desk and our infected COVID patient is here in this cubicle. As that air rises and wants to go up over that partition, imagine that the top of that wall was lined with a linear UVC lighting directed only upward. We would also have to assure that there weren't reflective surfaces um, above because the reflected UV light can also be unhealthy. Another negative aspect of UV light is that there are concerns that over time it would degrade surfaces. So much like outdoor sunlight, it could fade paint, it could cause other materials to fade or fail. Um, in this case, what we are investigating is the fact that if the UVC light is similar um, in its degradation to the sun's rays, then perhaps during a pandemic, it's a small price to pay to consider that we might need to repaint our ceiling in a couple of years, or perhaps that degradation over one year is insignificant. So in closing, I wanna share one last thought with you. Something that we're thinking a lot about here is the balance of risk, investment, and the way in which we occupy our space. I wanna stress that every building and every business is going to have a unique solution. As an example, we first need to decide during the pandemic how many people need or want to return to the physical office immediately, as many at Holt are working efficiently from home. And as that percentage increases, the risk increases, and therefore the investment to mitigate that situation increases. So if we can reduce the occupancy of our spaces temporarily during this time and increase spacing between individuals, then perhaps we can save on more expensive solutions and only implement a few of these strategies. But if we try to reach higher occupancies, then we may need to invest more in those mitigative measures. I hope that something you heard here today is helpful. Take care, wear your mask, and be safe.